Yeah. Tupac Park not dead, n if he was dead, they'd be arresting those dudes for murder. You know he was somewhere that. smoking a Cuban cigar. You doing what you're doing right now. You know what I mean? Uh, September 7th, 1996. It's Saturday night on the busy Las Vegas Strip when police get an emergency call. All units shots fired in Cobol and Flamingo. Vehicles fleeing the scene. I was a bicycle patrol sergeant for uh, Las Vegas Metro Police. A call came out. They said that they heard gunfire uh, at the corner of Koval and Flamingo and saw some cars speed off after the gunshots. So at that time, those vehicles are heading south. I'm heading north on my bicycle, and we're virtually driving right at each other. I've got a pack of cars. I don't know exactly how many, maybe somewhere between five to seven cars. We know there's been a shooting. We don't know what happened. And we know that these guys are fleeing from the cops after a shooting. At that time, my first thought was, how am I going to stop these guys when I get to them? I'm getting closer, and they're getting closer. And as they turned left, the car kind of spun out, two flat tires, and everybody came to a stop right as I was pulling my bike into the cars. All of the doors flew open on the cars, and I thought for sure this was going to be a shooting situation. Get on the ground! All of you now! Get back! So I pulled out my gun. Uh, there's probably about 10 guys that popped out of the cars, and I could tell right away these were hardened gang member types. Get down! I said get on the ground! Every one of you, now! Stay down! I could see in one car there was somebody who didn't come out, so I thought, this is probably the shooter. This is the one guy who's not getting out of the car. So I walked towards him. I walked towards the car. As I was approaching the car, I saw this guy coming up my backside. I said, get back! And this guy is huge, and he's bleeding. This guy was clearly a big threat. The wounded man is Suge Knight, a record producer and music executive. Suge Knight also had been shot in the head, and the bullet had pierced his scalp, but not his skull. Stay back now. I said stay back. No. But he's acting like nothing happened to him. He's still running around. He's screaming. He's yelling. And I pointed the gun at him. Stay back. He'd put his hands up and he'd walk backwards, just a couple little shuffle steps. But then when I turned away, he'd start coming back at me again. Hey, hey, whoa, step back, step back. And I'm trying to watch the guy in front of me because I'm thinking he's the shooter. And all I could see was kind of a silhouette in the car. And I was looking right at the passenger side door. I noticed there were bullet holes all in the side of that door and in the front windshield of that car. So I grabbed the car door uh, with my left hand while I still had my gun in my right, and I was trying to pull open the door. The guy who was sitting in the seat kind of fell out with the door. I grabbed him with my left hand and kind of brought him down to the pavement. He was still alive. He was still breathing. Close proximity to the handle itself, I think they somewhat disabled the mechanics of the door handle. And I was pulling it, pulling it, and couldn't get it open, So, which was just making me even more concerned. I'm like, I got this guy here, and now I can't even open the door. And I just pulled it, and finally it popped, and it came open. Uh, when I pulled the door open, now we've still got people running around. People are yelling. I'm trying to watch these other guys a little bit. And now I've got, at this point, uh, Suge Knight is coming up behind me. And, uh, you know, I'm looking at him, and here's this guy, is giant, and I'm just like, man, this is a bad situation for me. And I, uh, I pulled the door open, and when I pulled it open, uh, the guy sitting in the passenger seat, who turns out later to be Tupac, he kind of slumped out, came out with the door. So he's in the car, he's leaning against the door, and as I open the door, he kind of spills out. So he spilled out, and I just kind of grabbed him with one hand, and then I was pointing the gun at Suge with the other, because Suge is still trying to run up to me, and you know, the guy's clearly a Over there. The convoy hits a red light at the corner of Flamingo and Koval. Two cars stop in front of the vehicle carrying Suge and Tupac. Tupac's bodyguard pulls up directly behind. With Suge and Tupac focused on the women on their left, they don't notice the late model Cadillac pulling up on their right. So now it's completely blocked in and there's absolutely no, nowhere for him to go. The arm came out 
of the back door and it starts firing into Tupac. Bang, 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 bang. And once it stopped, all you saw was all this smoke going up in the uh, air and the car just took off. I grabbed Pac, I pulled him down. I got shot in the head with a, I still got a 45 bullets an inch to my skull. I get out the car, I tell the police, I say, hey, slow up. They got the guns rolled out on us. I'm saying, look, I'm shot, he shot, slow up. They say, you want to get shot again? Hey, be quiet. We, we need an ambulance. Get out right now. Don't move. Shug was on the ground. And I said, that's the CEO of our a record label. He's a victim here. So the police let uh, Shug up off the ground, and Tupac was still sitting in the BMW. For whatever reason, the door wouldn't open from the outside. They couldn't get Pac out the car because they did not open the door and take the seatbelt off. So I did. So he opened the door and we pulled Tupac out of the car and we laid him on the ground. The ambulance approached. And. Discretion TV, 21 Gun Salute, yes, sir. Capo, Vatatino, respectfully, check him back in. And here we go, retired Lieutenant Chris Carroll, freestyling. To him, he's saying in 2021, he's the one that opened up the Beamer. And it's very important when we look at and pay attention to retired lieutenants, retired law enforcement, retired parole officers, Anybody with any kind of law enforcement background, it's very important that we listen to the details they putting out, especially with 2021 and with 2021 vision. Yes, sir. One eye is better than the other. Because we can see through the fuck shit. We can see y'all all is just trying to rewrite Pac history in an instant. Four years ago, you know, Chris Carroll, he was on that douche face Vlad TV preparing us for 2021. And it flew over a lot of people's heads. I've been watching this douche face. You see, one thing with Vatatino Capo, you know, I took a lot of cases to trial. I fought a lot of cases. I copped out on cases, but I paid attention to my cases. And one thing I did, once I started this channel four years ago, forgive me. I didn't do all my homework in the beginning, but when I started to do my homework, I started noticing stories flip-flopped around, and that's why they can't take Discretion TV out. Deuce faces like Chris Carroll, the biker, you know, one thing about those bike cops, anybody from the hood, you ever seen a bike cop trying to be a fucking hero? Fucking bike cops are the worst fucking cops, in my opinion, I'm sorry. They worse than the niggas that I got to work that I walk on the foot, like the beat walkers, they're worse than fucking beat workers. Yo, bicycle cops are worse than beat worker cops, in my opinion. You know, Chris Carroll, you should be ashamed of yourself. The fact that this all leads to them trying to blame Suge Knight, 2021 vision. You know, they all just trying to blame Suge Knight. Watch, one way or another, it's all aiming to blame Suge and it's fucked up. It's fucked up. You know, little stories like this. Who opened the fucking Beamer? Counts. You feel me? Who opened that BMW door? It counts. It may not count to you, but to a lot of Pac fans, and trust me, to the ones that's changing Pac's story, trust me, to the ones that's changing Pac history, it counts to them too. Why the fuck are y'all trying to change that story around so much? You feel me? Drop a comment below, let me know. Yes, sir, hit the bell, we ain't a motherfucking hard to tell. Fat Tina respectfully check in. And like I always say, man, 10 years from now, you're going to wish there's a fucking Fat on Discretion TV. I bet that, no cap. Peace. Can I get this guy here and now I can't even open the door? And I just pulled it and finally it popped and it came open. So they ain't not just a snitch and be smart, son. <laughs> because <laughs> Tupac not ain't dead. Smart as you should, Tupac not dead, n He was dead. They'd be arresting those dudes for murder. You know he's somewhere smoking a Cuban cigar. You know what you're doing right now. You know what I mean? Valentino giving me shoes.